It's a mess in this attic Lot going on but there ain't no need to panic Come on up and join, we getting wild, getting manic Spitting truth for all you fanatics uh, Every week got something new to say Ain't no filter, this shit coming straight from the brain It's coming straight from the brain Yeah, it's coming straight, coming straight from the brain What's up everybody? Today is Friday, April 16th, 2021. This is A Talk in the Attic and I'm your host Kirk Ross. Coming at you today with a super special episode, one that brings the Grand Rapids Poet Laureate Kid Kane into the studio. She came with her friend Wayne Bowerman in tow, a fellow poet. And it was an awesome conversation. I can't wait to get into it. She's a Grand Rapids native. She's in the beginning of her three-year term as Grand Rapids official Poet Laureate. We talk a little bit about what that even means, talk a lot about poetry, a lot about self-expression, creative expression, and a lot about authenticity. Uh, We even get to hear a little bit of kids' poetry, albeit an old one, but I think you'll find, like I did, that everything kid says is relatively poetic, and it was great to have her friend Wayne alongside her. I had an awesome time talking with her. Because this is a Grand Rapids-focused, art scene-specific show, We're only using one musical artist today for today's show, and that's going to be Hilton. Uh, That's the stage name of Joe Jenneman, a Grand Rapids native, now living in L.A., uh, starting to take off quite a bit under this new Hilton nameplate. You're going to hear several songs from him today, all of which have come out in the last few months. Please go check out Joe when you get a chance. Please check out Kid when you get a chance on Instagram, on her website, Kid Said It. That's K-Y-D. S-A-I-D-I-T dot com. Kids said it. You find out where that came from. And I'm just, I'm, I'm blabbering. Let's get into the thing. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the weekend. There's a lot of sensitive, intuitive, loving type people that'll be listening to this particular episode because kid will attract that crowd. I need to ask you a favor. I'm not a particularly religious person, but my first cousin is really battling right now a, a, a very serious uh, reactions to COVID. We finally caught a break last night. He got flown down to Indianapolis. So whatever your form of prayer is, whether it's thinking about him, whether it's praying, whether it's uh, just doing something positive somewhere else, whatever you can do, please send some positive love, some prayers to my cousin David and to his family. Uh, He's coming on the show. He's supposed to have come on the show numerous times by now. He's got an amazing story. That story is now just going to be even better. We're going to make that happen, provided we we can get him through this thing. So... Thanks so much for considering that. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks to the Michigan Podcasting Network. Thanks to Hilton, the musician and lover boy who helped him create the theme song up top. With that, let's get into this awesome conversation with Kid Kane and Wayne Bowerman. Leading us into that will be a clip of a new song, Bones by Hilton. With that, let's get into this thing. Let's start the show. When we're all just compromised to chemicals Wanna go berserk like a goddamn seminal You bring the war paint, I will be the general Hop up on my hot horse, no remorse I get mine, then take yours Uh, don't mean to be a dick But the world made me cold, the medicine made me sick So I made my own rules, find joy in the freedom But soon as I start climbing, they gon' find the boy and seize him Like, somebody give this man an antidote, the pain is sinking in It's a problem cause he like it, he's addicted to the sand I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go, no I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go, no Tell the pretty lies Just kid Okay, I'm here with Kid Kane Kid kid is... She's a, a big role here in Grand Rapids. Okay, we're not going to get into the definition of it. I already asked her up front, what exactly is a poet laureate? To which you said. You should Google it. So No, poet- but I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, you know, a poet laureate is, you know, a person who loves the art of poetry and who becomes an ambassador of space to be able to push the art form forward. And so it's not something different than I was already doing Poetry is a part of my life. It's the center of my joy. It's the thing that has been my best friend and just been a parent and, uh, you know, a keeper of secrets, a blanket. I love poetry and I love uh, expression and I'm just an emotional person. So I get to be an emotional person for the city of Grand Rapids for the next three years and do cool things with poetry with my peers, young people, people who didn't know they were poets. Um, cause there's a, there's a poet in a poet laureate in all of us. For sure. Well, when did, when did you get the bug? 
Um, I was very, very young. We had a <clears throat> poetry festival at my elementary school. Here in Grand Rapids? In Grand Rapids, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we got to read some poetry that we found in the library. That was pretty much it. We got to do it in a space with my, you know, with our families there. They got to come and hear us read these poems. And at that point, I just fell in love with just words first. And then poetry followed. But, you know, I've always been a writer since I was small. So what was the first thing you remember writing? Or enjoying writing, I should say. The first poem I remember saying, and I think that's why I'm probably like to be a performance poet and like somebody that, that's on stage. Because I was at that poetry festival at six years old. And I'm like, oh, there's a quick poem called Ice Cream in July with two words, lit quick. And it didn't matter. I felt extreme energy when I was in front of the crowd saying that two line poem. And then the following year we did it again and I got a bunch of people together with with suckers. It wasn't ice cream. But I was still at a point where I was trying to organize, even as a small person, just like get a group of people together to lick it's hilarious. So your quick. first quick, lit quick. <laughs> There's a lesson in that, folks. I, I, you know, move move quickly, I guess, and uh, I don't know, but it was fun. I had a fun time as a small person on stage, and it makes sense as to why I'm doing it now, just because I love the energy that I received in that moment, at just at six or seven years old, and now, you know, yeah. I love to be on stage. Well, why don't, before we get into it too far, let's introduce Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Or Wayne, why don't hey. you introduce yourself? <laughs> Uh, my name is Wayne, uh, Wayne Barman. I've been doing the open mic scene for a while here in Grand Rapids, and that's how we know each other. And I'm really excited about what you, you just said about uh, uh, getting to be emotional for the city of, <laughs> of, of Grand Rapids. I feel like, yes, I, I'm, I'm so excited about that. Are there any more positions? <laughs> I'd love to be emotional for this. I mean, I mean I, everyone gets to, right? There's a, I just said, I literally said there's a poet in a, every single one of us. And so, you know, the most important part is, you know, for us to uh, document the history of our own hearts, document the history of our spirits and our souls. And it's like uh, everybody may find the poet that is in them and it may not necessarily look like the way I'm a poet. It's just like it could be something that you jot on the bottom of your calendar every month, just something that you feel, even if it's just one line, mm -hmm. you said it, you said it from your heart, you said it and it was true. Um, someone can read it and also feel something from it. And you've just written a line of poetry every time that you speak, if it's coming from your heart and it's authentic, um, you're participating in the art of expression. And if you put it on the page, you'll have a poem. That's a beautiful thing too, yeah. because I feel like at times, well, maybe I'm speaking for myself here, of course, but at times, it's, it's, it's a struggle to get anything done, you know, like we're in our own heads or whatever mm -hmm. the case is. And you can always sit down and write something, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what it is, even if it's, I can't write or something, it's, you're still producing something. I think there's magic in that. Yeah. I think if you remove the judgment and I, I think that's where it started for me, like I always call the time when I can't write pinopause. It's like, uh, I can't get the words out in, I'll probably find a new way to express myself, whether that is through painting or through photography or whatever it is. I'm just la I'm just realizing what penopause is. Like, oh, yeah. Sorry, it's like a second. Got it. Yeah, you got to say it out loud. <laughs> so I go through these moments of uh, penopause, but I did find out later that it's like uh, when I'm running from myself, I can't write. So if I'm afraid of the truth, then I'm not writing. And so it's like that's the way that I've been able to like reconcile the inability to get things on the page and get to the point where you just said, it's just like, even if you can't think of this fancy thing to write, write about the fact that you can't write. It'll change. It'll Somewhere change. in there, it'll it'll, start to, yeah. some, some, something will arise, you know? <laughs> and so uh, I didn't always have that perspective and I'm happy to be there now. Well, it's, a, it's, it's pretty wild that you're a professional poet, uh, you know, poetry is a beautiful thing. Everyone can be a poet. Mm -hmm. Most poets are poor or not doing poetry for their life. Would you would you agree with that? I, I don't know that they're necessarily poor because we're so rich in, of course. in expression. But, um, you know, a lot of us are going to be cash poor. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, can, we, we can be cash poor and, and not have access to a financial capital. Um, 
uh, and we may be just be doing it as a hobby or something that we find a way to squeeze in to our time. But um, I am such a believer in the power of following your heart and it is a scary jump and leap to take. But um, yeah, a lot of people don't have the ability to just say or haven't chosen to just say, I'm going to do this. Maybe that's the difference. Maybe yeah. that's the only difference. That's the only difference is uh, I value myself and not to say other people don't, but to honor. I'm a very emotional person, which is why I get to be the poet laureate to honor the things that I have the capacity for and the things that I don't have the capacity for. And so when I, if I'm sitting around um, kind of following this very strict regular routine I'll never be in a space to where I can actually regulate and express myself authentically and naturally because um, I'm consumed with something else that we've been convinced is more important than what's actually important, which is us. All right. And, but I think a lot of us got an opportunity to experience that through COVID. I know it slowed me down a bunch and gave me the ability to consider different things. And so I hope that uh, people can breathe in. To the fact. We should take a deep breath together in the room. That's good. Yeah. If people can just be find a way to find enough stillness to acknowledge the things that are beautiful and important to them, they'll recognize how easy it is to um, reel in sustainability. And reel in just like the ability to stay afloat because you're in line with yourself. And so that's where I'm at. And I'm loving it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It, I mean, and from what I hear, that's kind of like you've been able to slow way down too and just kind of like really focus. Find, create, do yeah. the creative path. Um, and we all have different safety nets. And some of us are just willing to take a risk. I've, I know what it's like to, to not have anything. And I'm not ever afraid to go there again because I know I can find a way my back. You have so, to get through it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's got a lot of these questions for those of you listening to the first time and for those for you of course the question like mo most poets aren't making any money that's more because like i'm being, i'm kind of facing some of those concerns myself down you know what i'm saying the, the safety net thing was so ingrained in me as a kid uh that it, it, unknowingly i was following that that security thing my whole life instead of following the creative passions now of course of course corrected uh did you ever get off of that that creative train where you were following some other some other person's goal or some other oh i mean well i had to find a way to to survive so of course i did what i thought i had to do which was uh i tried to go to college i'm a college dropout proudly um and then i worked lots of hours in a company that i hated and i didn't at companies that i hated and jobs that i hated yeah. And that didn't make me feel good. That didn't make me feel honored. I couldn't dress the way that I wanted to dress. Um, I'm a black woman. That's very assertive. Uh, the way that that is framed in worlds where you're the only one is that you are. Once you're different, you're trouble. And so, you know, just all these things that, you know, are stacked against you in the world. I kind of, I've, I experienced it and then mm -hmm. it, it made me tired. I was exhausted and I was like, this cannot be it. And you were young still at that point. Still, yeah, mm -hmm. still really, still really young, but this can't be it, you know? Um, and I got laid off and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I started delivering pizza. I got in my car. I was driving a, a 2002 Toyota Celica and- uh, Kind of a cool car though. I, old, I, but cool as fuck. Old, but cool. And I loved it. <laughs> But I was driving that car like, you know, it was a spaceship delivering pizza like it was my mobile office. No music. Uh, the first time I got an opportunity to be with myself. Wasn't working. Wasn't at home. Didn't have any, you know, anything surrounding. It was my, my first solo time as an adult, mm -hmm. literally being in this car, going from place to place to deliver pizza, being able to have the time to sit with my own thoughts a lot during the day, you know? Yeah five six seven eight hours a day just while i'm back and forth of course with a little bit of interruption but not much but the interruption is kind of inspiration at times too right yeah for sure but i needed that space to explore and express so that allowed me to slow way way down and then someone paid me 20 bucks once to say a poem at an event and i was like somebody just paid me 20 bucks to be myself i was just working a job that i was making like 16 17 dollars an hour it's like i just said a poem 20 bucks that's cool yeah. And 
And then I started creating opportunities around that to be able to make more money than that. You know of saying? course, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, it just took that first 20 bucks I, to get me to see that there was a way to get money that wasn't hourly, that was that was legal. It was, it was, yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and, you were do, and you were being and I 100% be myself. yourself. As close to uh, myself as I can get, because, right, I'm still working towards um, finding bliss in order to know myself at my truest and most genuine capacity. Um, but that's kind of where I found it. Re found poetry. You know, you go to school, you go to work, you kind of lose your way in that downtime of delivering pizza. I found poetry again. That's awesome. Mm. What, so were you writing during that time or just kind of remembering, remembering things that you would come up with? Uh, both, but mainly remembering them or like, you know, at least rem remembering a segment and like repeating that in my head over and over again until I made it to a place where I can <laughs> jot it in my phone and write it down. I love to write on napkins and receipts. Um, but, you know, that period put me in a space to like... Uh, always perform my poetry from memory. Now I'm getting to a point where I'm like, I don't have a lot of mental space and capacity to remember more poems. So I'm like, <laughs> I have to get comfortable with reading from the page, which has allowed me to take a slower and more softer approach to poetry. And also just like COVID has you feeling more. We were just in divine feminine season. <laughs> so, of course. You know, um, we all were like softening up. And that definitely showed up in like my more recent poetry. So, but like, uh, Wayne, what, what would you say? Like, where'd you start? Oh, uh, for me, um, I started like six, seven, eight years old. Whenever I started listening to music is when I started writing. Um, that was my, my gateway. Um, you know, uh, I listened to pop songs, recorded them on the radio, mid eighties. So John Cougar Mellon. And I wrote parodies, Weird, Weird Al, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Awesome. And then, um, you know, uh, you get to your teenage years and you start, you know, you, puberty and depression and all of this stuff. And then you, it's not it's not cool enough to just write stuff that makes your friends laugh anymore um, or your parents or whatever. And then, and then that's when it started becoming a really, like, really powerful, like, tool and outlet for me because I wasn't, I, I would, I would listen to music, but at that point I was not, like, listening to pop music. I was listening to, like, you know, uh, heavy metal or, like, hardcore hip hop on my headphones. And, and it wasn't, I wasn't trying to mimic it. I was trying, I was feeling the energy so I could like write my own thing. It was yeah. cathartic. Um, so that's how I got, you know, I didn't get into poetry through Emily Dickinson and Poe and, and through the regular route. I found it backwards through pop music. And I'm glad to see that that recognition is starting to like change. I think significantly like when Bob Dylan gets like a Nobel, you know, award, it's like the whole culture is starting to realize like maybe art's important. Maybe. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you guys both started young, but was your exposure, well, your exposure was you wanted to perform. Really, that was ultimately the thing. But did you have exposure to actual poetry as like that young of a kid? I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that was the exposure. It's just like, I was the one that put, picked this really like short poem to memorize and say, um, but there were students from different grades that read different types of poetry in that moment. And I was really like super into it. And then... You grow up, you you listen to hip hop or you watch stuff like Deaf Poetry Jam mm -hmm. and you hear all of these people expressing in all these very beautiful ways. And so the voice was missing from poetry for me as a child, which I think gave me the opportunity to like acknowledge my own sound and my own voice and my own ability to just express um, by way of my own vibration and the vibration of my heart and my spirit without anything else kind of. But then when I watch Deaf Poetry Jam and you watch everybody take a different approach to expressing the language, it's just like, that's what I enjoy so much. That's why I love um, hearing po poetry and the audio element of poetry. And I'm always very attracted to uh, people who have found their own rhythm, that have found their own cadence. Um, so many times we 
see or hear poetry that um, it can kind of sound the same or the expression can be the same. Yeah, they fall into that same, same. kind of rhyme meter. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so that's why I like to honor poetic form and be like, wow, this is really cool how someone decided to uh, create their rhythm in their pathway. But that's not mine. I can use it. Yeah. And I can use it to influence me. But it's like, I think that's the beautiful part of finding poetry uh, from the heart instead of like the mind where people are like, I learned this poetic form or I I know how to write all these different types of poetry. And like now I'm exploring that, but I'm exploring it after I've already found the feeling my, part of it. I, yeah, I found I found my heart and I found the vibration of uh, how I should express. And now I'm like, wow. I can respect and honor how this poet created this form. And like, that's really beautiful. And I just want to, I can just have it impact me Yeah. instead of taking it on. And I think that's the beautiful part about like, you know, I am a college dropout. That is something different than any of the other poet laureates besides the one right before me, which uh, was Fable the Poet, uh, you know, first person of color and also uh, the first person without a degree. <laughs> so, he, and, so he kind of set the... Yeah, set yeah. the foundation for you, if you will. I mean, absolutely. To some extent, yeah. We were, you know, I was actually on the uh, committee um, that selected him as poet laureate, and that was kind of my thing. It's just like, all right, I, I think these other people were awesome, but no, nope, I don't know who they are. All right. And we're in the community, and we're connecting, and you know, people like me, people like Wayne, people like Fable, and you know, so many other people, Gleason and all, uh, Bree Ross, and all these people in the community. Um, that love poetry and the art of poetry and they're connecting with the people and while you know being able to get in a bunch of literary magazines is very beautiful it's just not everybody's route and so it's important now that that we've had this shift to where yeah fable broke a glass ceiling and then i got to break it again um first black woman first openly queer person to hold the the position it's like that that's what we need to see right. so that we can like experience the expression of people who have different experiences, not just somebody that, you know, went to school, went to college and, and got good grades and learned how to write in poetic form. We're writing from our hearts, period, yeah. from our centers, from our core. And then, the, of course, the, another major value of that is that folks that are less open minded about stuff, you know, race and sexuality and all the stuff that's very personal and should not make a difference in how you evaluate someone. Those people are, might get exposure for the first time to an openly queer black woman, Yeah, you know, and, and realize, holy shit, she's awesome too. Is there some, I mean, isn't there some chance that that's kind of a big burden to be carrying around, but there are a lot of people out there that just are so backwards in their thinking and they need exposure. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and I don't, I don't navigate it for that reason. People can take from me what they will, yeah. you know, it's not something that I ever really think about from that lens. It's just like, uh, I'm getting, I'm here. I'm showing up into, in my fullness. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, like I said, stepping away from uh, the world of like a nine to five and then delivering pizza and then going from delivering pizza to working in a bar and being able to dress like myself and walk like myself and talk like myself and not be afraid to show up in my fullness. Um, would If I had not taken that route, I, I maybe I, I, I probably wouldn't be able to just like be like, yeah, I'm openly queer and you know i could be at working a job that wouldn't allow that to be so if i you know right. yeah. if i hadn't broke broke away but being able to show up in my fullness everywhere i work with um the the, the diatribe inc which is a a local arts and culture nonprofit and i work with them as a teaching artist and also i'll be doing some summer programming with them and just um i get to be myself i get to have an organization that honors me I, as a whole Mm -hmm. um that prioritizes black brown queer um that is not something that we've seen a lot of and you know that that's very liberating that allows you to take claim of yourself and to really uh envelop and embrace yourself and be like wow this is who i am and for 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 this time i don't have to I don't have to apologize. I don't have to try to pivot in anything. I get to show up as myself. And uh, then that gives you space to be like, okay, now that I can show up as myself and not have to worry about showing up as someone that becomes palatable for others, I can actually look at all the other areas in which I can improve. Mm -hmm. It's hard to work on levels of yourself 
if you have to fake it when you go to space. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's like you once you have time to be yourself, you figure you can figure out who the fuck you are. Right? Yeah. Once yeah. you get the opportunity to be yourself, I'm incredibly privileged in that space, and I'm privileged because I took a leap to say I deserve it. Right. And so, in in me saying that I deserve it, I, I've attracted opportunities that can tell me that I deserve it, and the opportunity of to work uh, for a nonprofit like the Die Tribe, um, or with a nonprofit, I like to say. Um, cause I work for Erica and I work for, you know what I'm saying? Or for me of course. or work for kids. Um, but you know, kidsetit.com. Go check out that, go check out diatribe in the show notes as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Please check out diatribe. But yeah, that gives you the opportunity to be yourself. And now, uh, where, uh, you were saying that you listen to hip hop and before you listen to hip hop, you were writing, uh, you know, uh, parody Pa- yeah. parody work yeah and you know when i first started writing i was writing from a very uh, emotionally charged uh you know space where it was like very rooted in my identity i'm black and you know the 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 way that you are experiencing your b- blackness and you're mm-hmm. recognizing that the world is kind of set up for you to like you know uh it's like you, you're black and you get a death sentence. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, there's fear associated with that. And where there's fear, there the emotion becomes, you know, the, the emotion that's expressed is, a, is centered around that. So when I first started poetry, I talked a lot about being a black person and black person in this country, the lack of uh, equity and mm-hmm. all of these things. And now as I've been able to, like I said, come into myself a little bit more, those things are definitely still a part of me and still important and they will arise. But now I'm in a space where like, because I've had all these opportunities to be myself, now I just want to write about me. I want to write about my joy. I want to write about, like, I want to basically use poetry to manifest my entire life and to put words into play that are so powerful and strong that anything that I say that I want, I attract. Because that's what I've, that's what I've done. I, I said I want, I, that's why as kids said it. I say I want something. And it happens. And it happens. And then... You can look on and be like, yo, I remember she said that. Yeah, kids said it. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right, because, yeah. that, you know, I, that's how I'm using this art form as a way to, like, love myself as a way to speak to me. And then you, if it resonates with you, it resonates. Take what resonates. Right. Even if you don't like it, take what resonates. You know, and I'm writing for me and it's very beautiful and life changing. And that's something that I want to teach my students. That's what I want to, to teach the community or share with the community because I don't necessarily have to teach anyone. Take what you can and hopefully you it, it gets you to a point where you can get closer to you. That's the goal for me as a writer is to get closer to myself mm-hmm. and to find my way home through the expression of my spirit in my heart. I couldn't have said that. Any, not even close to that well. Right. That, what about I mean, you? You got a you got a shot. What's it? What is it to you? I mean, that's that's absolutely <laughs> perfect. My, I'm 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 glad that your your brand and your website and everything is kid said it because my favorite line from the first time, really probably still is, "I am God and so are you." And uh, um, that has been such a huge part of my journey. Oh, I didn't even know that. Um, like, I'm God as are you. Yeah. We'll be like, back right after this short break. I bet there's a cocaine party in the hills right now. Every big name is feeling so small somehow. I bet they all wish they had a girl like you to make life feel like a cartoon. And you ain't never gotta wake up, no. And it feels like, ooh. I am God, as are you. Yeah. But like, it says it in the book, you know. The, I mean? You know, that it, it, has been like, I was writing papers at the seminary, you know, graduate level about like this concept of like theosis, this old, you know, that fourth century saints and shit <laughs> talked about how, <laughs> like, if you really understand Christianity, like what it's trying to say is we become God, like they had this saying, God became man so man could become God. Like, and, and so that's what it's all about. And so like, what's God's name? I am. And so, you know, Jesus said the kingdom is within. And so I had this like moment 
where I like was sitting there drunk, <laughs> listening to Kate Kane, and she says, I am God, and so are ye. And I was like, Holy like what am I? I'm what a throwing, succinct, what a succinct way I to say am it. throwing <laughs> my life away when it's that simple. Like I don't need to like I don't need a bell to ring at eleven every Sunday morning to tell people what's already true, what right. they already know. The truth will set you free. You just got to go out and start just yelling the truth. Right. You, oh, yeah. the, you know it's really interesting. This is an old, very old poem. What's and, the name of the poem? Uh, it doesn't matter. Do they have names? The, pain, the name of the poem is uh, Ankh On. And it's a poem that I wrote as I was working my way through uh, stepping away from religion and, um, you know, staking my claim as a person who, uh, my, as my birthright is to acknowledge myself as a reflection of the creator. And when you actually um, understand text, when you actually understand language and you read this information, um, you can take it for face value and use it as a means to kind of like speak life to yourself, right? Uh, you read the Bible. Um, I did grow up Christian. I am no longer Christian. I am a, um, a acknowledger of God and the power of the most high, but you know, just from this yeah. Christian lens, I'm no longer there. Right. And uh, this poem was while I was doing what I said I do with poetry, which is like speaking life into a more powerful version of myself. And so uh, this poem, Ankhon, I should say the poem. Yeah. Say the poem. If I can remember it. Oh, I, I used to wear this Ankh necklace. And then... I don't I, even know what Ankh means. Should okay, I? Ankh is the symbol here. And it is a, a symbol of eternal life. And that is why I love this symbol. And um, that is why, our, you know, it, it, I'm eternal. Energy never dies. It's only transfers. And that gives you so much power when you are raised Christian and you've been living between in the confines of heaven and hell. It's, mm. it's a very sticky situation and very... <laughs> Scary place. It's very finite. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's just like, damn, am I going to put myself in a position of just like, oh, but, uh, you know, I'm going to put myself in a position to either experience extreme bliss or uh, end up in the pits of hell. That is very mm -hmm. scary. It, for and if you're anything like me, you're spending a lot of time in your childhood thinking like, well, if it, and in the off chance that it is really a heaven, I probably should at least act like I believe. You know, oh, yeah. then, oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Like, well, wait a minute. Wager. You gotta play you gotta you gotta play your cards right. Or you don't really have for me, I don't know if it was that or if it's just like you know what you know until you know something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like as a queer person and a person who uh makes uh who misses the mark, because that's what sin means. Sin means to miss the mark. Um and when you think about missing the mark, we miss it so often. And if you're always concerned about missing the mark, you're never even going to be yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And so, like, just this ownership of myself and my own body through this symbol, which is like, oh, I'm an eternal being. And every day when I wake up, it's judgment day. Every day, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the poem, Ankhon. I said, every day I used to wear a necklace and then I uh, always lost the necklace. So then I got the tattoo. And so that this poem will always be so. But I said, every time I leave my home, I do not leave without my ankh on. This poem is very old. Every time I leave my home, I don't leave without this ankh on. Regardless of what I have on, I intentionally externalize this eternal life that I've been given. No longer afraid of dying. My energy will keep on living. I am God as are ye. Mm. I am God as are ye. I was made in the image and the image of the most high. Genderless. So remove the notion of God being girl or a guy. My third eye is still blurry, but it's open. I was 28, so I say better late than never. I gave the religion back to the oppressor. I'll be spiritual forever. Forever I'll be spiritual. We must understand that the Bible is not literal. Challenge ourselves to understand the metaphysical. Regain control of our souls. We've been in bondage. Not saving souls, but draining pockets. Wallets and purses. Don't let them churches fool you. An establishment who choose who so-called sins they'll accept. When the church don't choose you... What's left? I confess. I'm not perfect, but I'm worth it. I am God, as are ye. I was made in the image of the Most High. I opened up all three of my eyes. I meditate most times. I elevate most nights. I take flight to this mental temple. It's simple. And every morning when I wake, something great takes place. Every morning when I wake, something great takes place. The Son of God returns in the sky every day. So I guess that makes every day judgment day. 
I guess that makes everyday judgment day. And I use that poem to Beautiful. find space for myself when I was in a world that told me that I was missing the mark every time. Mm -hmm. If you're always missing the mark, how do you find a place? Well, it's similar so, to your it's similar to your identity that you were that yeah. you, when you had to act like somebody every, else. Yeah, if you're it, right? well, at getting to the point where I'm able to pivot and get closer to myself, and you know, I like I said, I use those poems as a means to speak. Had to basically create my own sermon, and like repeat it all the time until I believed it. It became an affirmation, mm -hmm. you know. When you are you you grow up in a world where religion is like uh, the center of things, especially as a black person, when you're praying, hoping, and wishing for equity and change. Right. <laughs> when you know when you when you when your life does have a death sentence on it, and you are uh, redlined and boxed into a point place where you can't get everything that you need, mm -hmm. like you need a way to affirm yourself. And I use poetry. Well, it's a beautiful expression. That's a beautiful oh, yeah. poem. I see why oh, that moved you. I'm yeah. Not, you know. Oh, yeah. It's it's moved me since the first time I heard it, and it just it connected with what, like, I was I was just like I'm, you know, I paid a hundred thousand dollars in education, <laughs> and I got a Bible at, on Sunday morning, and I got the authority of the Lord, and I can't get people to come to church, and I'm not making any money, and you know, Kid King's just preaching it, you know at the hookah lounge and at the bar and like everywhere she could when I was first, when I first entered into the, the, um, uh, the scene, the scene, like, <laughs> I mean, uh, this human being was my absolute favorite person and the reason I kept coming back. And so to, um, and I didn't know this, I just value, uh, uh Wayne's expression. So, so much. And so, you know, it's beautiful to hear this for the first time that, uh, you know, yeah, that's how he feel feels. Good. Well, it, it, you know, I've... Poetry is always form and function, right? Form, all art is form and function. And for so long, it has been only about form, especially when we talk about poetry. That's why it's significant that... Dylan got an award in, in, in 60 years overdue. That's why it's significant that Fable and Kid Kane shattered glass ceilings in Grand Rapids. I, and that's why I'm humbled like to, to be here, to be on your team, to be your friend, because I look more like Lou Clatt. And, and I don't mean that if Lou happens to listen, three poet laureates back, he was my professor at Calvin. Taught me a shit Yeah, no shit disrespect. Ton. No disrespect. No, no. Taught me a right. shit ton. Mm -hmm. I mean, really one of the, another part of my journey and why I'm writing. But like, I, I, I look more like the old cat. That's, that's all about like the, the, the form and not the function. When you were talking about letting the emotions out and connecting with that human side and you, I, 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 I aren't we all us artists? We're always self-conscious and I'm always self-conscious that like, like maybe, I don't know, like just like you question the divinity within, you question the artist within. Yeah, and you question, that's real. and and so, so real. and so like like absolutely nothing means more to me than the Kid Kane stamp. Like I mean, like whatever, I can go on and sell a book by now, but like I've made it. So that's, you know, that's what's up. and that's <laughs> coming, and that's coming, from, and that's coming from his heart space, right? That's yeah. coming from his heart space because, you know, I did spend a lot of time, and I still do sometimes. Reading this poetry in this beautiful form with, uh, you know, impeccable grammar. I went to Grand Rapids Public Schools. And I can't say that my education was stellar. Right. Uh, but what's so tr the, the, what doesn't matter is that language and words was put here for us to communicate. And you can either understand it or you can't. There's someone who's going to speak my language. There's someone that's going to vibrate with me. It doesn't matter if uh, everyone does. I don't need everyone to. No. My my people, my tribe, the people that are riding the wave with me, they will feel it and it will be real to them and it will be honest to them. And, and, and however that moves them, I would like to honor and respect their expression as well. However, it comes for, from you, mm -hmm. however it arises. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's no 
wrong way. And I, I wish that I would have had that a long time ago to say. Uh, and I think that uh, my favorite artist, um, you know, and the artist that I found before people were like talking about it right now, I know rich people had the paintings, but uh, Basquiat, um, I was, I was probably, you know, a teenager and I'm in my, I'm 34. I was probably a teenager uh, stumbling upon a uh, Basquiat in the library and be like, who was this person who scribbled and why do they care? I was offended. I was like, why is this a big deal? He was scribbling. And then I took a, then I took a breath, turned around a couple years later and kicked myself and said, whoa, who told me that perfection was the way? Who told me that something had to be as close to the real thing to be honored, to be valued, to be respected? I would rather your scribble than your, I mean, and it takes some, it takes so much skill and so much spirit to actually be able to do, get something to perfection. But when you let something come from you raw and you don't really care about anything other than this is the emotion that I'm feeling and you try to adjust it and you try to put, you, 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 you put your finesse on it, yours. Mm -hmm. And Basquiat I said, this is what came out of my body. And he made a figure that was just like, I wonder if you could have did that. But the fact that he felt that when he did that, he believed in that. That's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And that got me closer to myself. Right. That's the, mm -hmm. that's my, that's yeah. the thing. How do you get closer? Is it authentic to you? Is it real? Is it true? Did you feel good when you did it? It's the process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write a poem in shitty form. Bad rhyme schemes. But it felt good to me. I'm going to ride the wave. You can't, you can't, you can't go to the lake and say waves move like this. So you can't come to Erica or to Kid and say Erica move like this. I'm going to move like me. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be true. And you're going to feel it or you're not. Mm. You're going to take something mm. or you're not. Mm -hmm. That's not for me. That's for you. Mm -hmm. My expression is for me. It's. I sit in the woods all the time. I, 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 I started my mental health journey, my poetry journey, my outdoor journey at the same time. I just celebrated my 34th birthday. I just turned seven. 2014 is when I walked away from, from that job. And it's also the time that everything snapped inside of me. And I decided to be um, honest and real and, and really get to the, through the clutter. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know. So, well, happy seventh birthday. Thank you. You thank you. A lot I, of that times in the woods. I spend a lot of my time outdoors. The uh, uh, the best books I ever owned were just the trees and the grass and the things that are out there. And you can just find yourself in every piece. When you look at anything outside, you can just find yourself. And then you can also find that you wouldn't be here without that element or that component. And it's just like when you find out how connected you are to the universe and that you are nature, it's just like there's nothing that I can do wrong. I can't do anything wrong. No, I, I, I there is no wrong. There is no wrong. Right. There's things that occur. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to, through my relationship with the outside, find neutrality and find a space and a place where I can just say, this came for me and it may have caused an adverse reaction in my life or in the lives of others, but it was a part of what was supposed to occur. And like, I didn't like it. And this is what I learned about myself from it. And so it's like, no judgment. I can just see what arises, love it and pivot. It's just like watching uh, the same tree try to get closer to something. If you, if you watch trees and plants move, they're pivoting to get closer to whatever it is that they need. You see them limp mm. towards the sun. Towards yeah. the sun, where they're reaching oh, out. Yeah. You know, you, they're, they're, there's nothing right or wrong about that. They're getting to it, however they get to it, and that, that's what I learn. I get to ride my own wave. I get to be my own shade. I get to, you know what I'm saying. I get to be bare if I want to. I get to bear leaves if I want to. I get to be blue if I want to. I get to be green if I want to. Envy or sadness. No one's judging the sky. Sometimes they do. They get mad. And that's also a way that you can connect with yourself and pivot. It's to just, it's just be like, oh, I used to curse the cold. 
every time I went outside, I was cursing the cold. And then I wonder why I was upset when I got to places and anxious because I just messed up my energy by being so angry that it was cold outside. And I live in Michigan and I don't plan to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to change your attitude. You got to change, you gotta change yeah. it. So it's like, uh, okay, so now you go do everything that you would normally do in the summer outside and see what happens. Oh, you normally go outside in your chair and, and sip beet juice in the summer? Oh, take your lawn chair outside and sit in a snow mound and chill for a little while and see what happens. <laughs> then you stop being affected. Now I'm so much more patient. Nothing affects me. I write poetry outside, do qigong outside. I'm, you know, just chilling in the elements. It's not always easy. I went to Miami and came back and had to start all over again. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? When you find a way to let the universe teach you, when you stop being reactive, start being proactive, accepting, non-judgmental. You get closer to yourself and you express more truly, more honestly. And now I just get to write poems about all the beautiful things I want to manifest. Like poetry everywhere. We should talk about that. I know that. What's the media? What's poetry everywhere mm -hmm. mean? Because it already is. Mm -hmm. It's in every element. Every element that you can uh, think of. If you just take, if you if you slow, if you're if you slow down enough, you can find a poem anywhere. <laughs> Let's find one in here. Um, there should be a bunch in here. I worked hard to make a bunch in here. So. You know, when you think about it from that, <laughs> from that realm. There's always a poem. Well, uh, I went to Nick's studio, or not his studio, but you know where he does work, mm -hmm. Dinderbeck. Yeah. And uh, he was teaching me how to cut wood with a table, with a table saw and hand saw. And there's a little strip of wood, and I wrote on it, um, "I am still a tree," <laughs> and I said some other stuff. <laughs> but I also wrote on the status the other day that if it weren't for the tree. I wouldn't be a poet. There would be no paper. There would be no pen. There would have been potentially no place for, for people to document their feelings and their emotions. Right. Uh, but if you really take it back to the tree again, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're literally surrounded by some table is wood. You know, the trees couldn't be without you. You couldn't be without the trees. It's just like yeah. everything oh is God. so connected. You know, everything, if you, you you can just find the connection in anything. I don't really know that that's a poem much, but... No, but there's poetry in that. So it's, I, feel, I feel like a, a lot of the... A lot of your beliefs, and I'm 100% with you on all of these. Like I'm jiving 100% with you. But it's like, they can make music now that sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. Like a computer can make, a computer can make mm -hmm. a song way better than we can make it, right? right? Yeah, oh yeah. And we all know how bad that sounds when a song's perfect, yeah. right? We can hear it. It sounds fake. It sounds thin. It sounds too tinny or whatever it is. Uh, same with poetry. You know, when, when you sit there and edit, or, edit on something on a word processor for two months and then... A team of editors looks at it, and then before it comes out, that's that's a good product. There's something at the end of that that's valuable, but to me, it's not as valuable as the human part of it, which is the air, which is the spouting it directly from your heart, which mm -hmm. is the spoken word, fucking up the words. And yeah, you said I, I don't know if that we're on recording yet or not, but you said on on you'll say you'll screw up on stage and say, "What do you say? We yeah. all make mistakes." Or you know, I, I, I mean that. That hopes, hopefully that makes you see me as human. That actually right? helps. It, it makes it better. It makes it a yeah. better experience. It's like anyone that goes to a concert and gets to go to the, the shit up front when they're playing and they're, they're rehearsing or whatever. Mm -hmm. You see your guy that you think is the guy or the woman, whatever, screwing up a bunch of times on their song. I don't. I don't think I ever want to. I don't want ever want to be viewed as like something that's like a com completely perfect and and, and, yeah. and without mistake. And I know that people practice and practice and practice and practice. I, I can I do that too. Of course. But at the end of the day, my emotion arises and with it, however it comes out. You know, if I stutter, if I mess up a word, whatever it is, it's a moment for me to honor myself and say, "Wow, you've committed so many." You know, Beyonce is Beyonce, but she messed up. Mm -hmm. And when she did, we connected with that part because we know what it feels like to mess up. And so, when you see my imperfect performance, love it. Love what arises. And I, I love that. Well, there's an, there's a big lesson for people listening. This is, doesn't mean you have to quit your job no. it, or anything like that. It just means you're ready. Now, you're as ready now as you're ever going to be to start producing whatever art you want to produce. Ooh. Quit pretending like you're not there yet or you're going to, you're never going to really be there. Right. So you're just as there now as you will be. Go. Start, even if it's it. not, the, even if it's not art, do that thing, I guess. Do that thing that makes you feel good about you. Right. Do that thing that uh, makes you feel honored. 
Right. Do that thing that helps you connect to yourself so well that it helps you to connect to the people that you live with. How many of us live with people that we don't know? Right. That we don't understand. That we don't have the time to get to get to know. And right. how can you really get to know other people and honor them and uh, empathize with their emotions when you neglect yours, when you're not taking care of you, when you're not tapped into you? You know, that's that's the goal of expression for me is like, how do I express art in a way that's so true to me that I get to heal? And how do I encourage people to express themselves authentically in a way that honors them and like not only will when you start to look at yourself and actually challenge your privileges and like look within and get in there deep and you are uh, being honest with about who you are and where you stand in the world you breathe in you can be like dang these are all the areas in which i can improve but i can't do it all the way can't I can't I don't have the capacity to do it even though I know I want to so I got to give myself some grace Mm because I can't do it right so then you're like if I deserve grace you deserve grace right (laughs) yeah yeah if you deserve grace you cut yourself slack first then you can realize then you realize oh man but you don't but you but you but people don't don't. people don't people are so hard on themselves and then we go to work for them and piss at everyone else yeah 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 Yeah. and it's like that's wild it's a wild way to be like look (laughs) You fall short, and then you pretend like you don't to other people, and then judge them for falling short. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people, sinner. People forget that their vocation is to be human. That 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 is right. that is the vocation. Well, there's the job title, yeah. and then yeah. there's the style of dress, and right. the thing that you have to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's there's the, the policy and the procedure, yeah. and the heart is missing. Yeah, the mind is missing. Yeah. <laughs> Just imagine if the if it, it when we get to a place in the world, if I'm saying I'm gonna say when when people are going to be allowed to be authentic, even at like an engineer, like I was, I got the fuck out of my career because of that exact reason. Not only was I not able to be myself, but when I was kind of showing signs of myself, the way I dressed, the way I acted, I was like getting called faggot and stuff by like executives. Okay. Like this is the kind of environment it was. Right. And that's all the environment is at a lot of these places at the higher levels, especially. I mean, it it, it doesn't matter the level. It it doesn't matter the level. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere where people, you know, we, we put on a uniform and then when when a part of you slips out or just even just like uh tonally i you know have a different dialect i'm i'm, I'm speaking from a different place yeah i've had to maybe yell in a way that you haven't yeah oh, you yeah. haven't even been able to acknowledge this part of your tone because you haven't had to we haven't had to live oh, through the experiences no, or whatever no, right, right no so you know when, when you're uh living in a uh state of survival and you and you've got all these things my tone's going to be different than yours oh yeah and honor it and respect it and because it's different don't try to make it out that i'm a bad person just because it sounds different than you or you know what i'm saying this is bull it's just bull crap so it's just like you know i love that i get to show up in the room as myself still gonna be anxious I, I, I stopped being afraid in rooms full of people once I realized I was in rooms full of people that were all afraid of rooms full of people too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. When you figure that out when you're like, oh he I see I know that toe tap. <laughs> yeah. I, I know I I know that anxious pivot. Oh, oh, everybody's anxious. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> everybody's feeling their own feelings and trying to get comfortable with themselves and, 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 and get comfortable in their own shit. In yeah. Their head. And it's just like I'm not, and then they, and then they're rehearsing it and they're apologizing a bunch, and it's just like, what is this? Breathe. Yeah, yeah. We should do that now. Deal with that. Let's all take a page out of Kid's book here, just like she urged us to do, and just like we actually did in the studio. Let's take a deep breath in, deep breath out, decompress a little bit. I'm slowly going to mix in one more clip here of Hilton. This is called Demons. So keep breathing. When we come back, we'll wrap up the conversation. We'll hear an awesome, epic poem from Wayne. You're going to hear and see a different side of Wayne when he's performing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Stick around. What's your biggest fear? Is it the future, not the past? Is it the facts? Is it the stats? Prove your backs against the glass? Is it the eyes looking down that they'll continue just to laugh? Or is it that there's no eyes here? Oh, oh, well. Let it be. We do all pass by. 
eventually Oh really? So that's what they say But what do they know? Your demons might just eat you whole you I breathe and I think about air and trees and clouds and grass and me and all of the parts of us that are connected. I'm reading, I was reading this book like, uh, I can't think of the name of the author, but um, it's called How to See. And he's like, oh, and you're eating an ice cream cone. Lit you're, quick. You're Lit quick, but also you're eating a cloud. <laughs> and I'm like, I see how you got there. But you gotta go away. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta find all the pieces. But then when you start, when you go in deep enough, when you when you scale in and out, you can just see how everything is so connected, including the way that we express ourselves when we do it from the heart, when we do it from the true place. Feels good. Amen to that. Somebody. Yeah, and, and, and even if it's just to you. Even if it's just to you, you don't have to share. There's an there's an element. A lot of what you're explaining, you're so much further along in your personal journey than me. But like, I've, I've kind of got seeds that were leading me to where you're at, you know? One of those is this idea that, oh, I just lost my fucking train of thought. But sometimes you just have a brain fart, and that's okay. I know. That's it's okay. okay. We all make mistakes. Yeah. I've learned that tonight. You keep, if you got something, go well, for what it. We oh, do, what, saying, what, 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 what do we do, do in poetry? What do we, we do in poetry when people are like, forget Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do we'll this. Just take a little breath. What I was going to ask you as poetry experts. Uh, I'm, experts. Just a, I'm just being myself. You know a lot about experts. You know a lot about poetry, though, so... Is, was poetry always a spoken word format that, for posterity reasons, we had to start recording on paper in order to keep record of it? You know what I'm saying? Because like reading poetry and, and hearing poetry are very different things. Mm -hmm. Because the rhythm, like as we talked about, the rhythm of the particular artist that wrote it is always going to be different than you're reading it in your head. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's just a question. Like, was the was all was it always performed, and it only became written in order to? Mm. Um, I can't, I can't, I, I don't really know. I'll let you speak to that in a different way. But I think that, uh, you know, um, culturally for me, uh, just being a black person who lives in America is, uh, we didn't learn, we didn't have the capacity or people didn't have the capacity to write, right. read, yeah, and learn. Of course. And so a lot of it was just like recorded and then just like, uh, songs and, 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 and chants and, and, and refrains and all these things were just like some hymns and all these things are just something that that's recorded in the brain when you don't have the capacity to actually put things on paper because you can't have paper or books or anything. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that, so, so in uh, the last 500 years, I'll speak to that from my own personal culture, but I'm pretty sure, you know, you know, people have just been using this language and, and memorizing and, and chanting and doing things like that. Yeah forever but for a poet for as a spoken word poet i don't know that there's much difference from all of it when you really think about it but the other question i had i was just gonna, i was doing this mentally now i'm gonna actually do it physically the other question i had rubs hands rubs hands in. um the other question you have i'm still thinking about it now again i i have a desire to put the podcast out twice a week you have the desire to go and speak to uh perform recite poetry in front of folks same with you I'm also terrified every time I do it. I'm not really terrified, but like there's an element of me that's oh, like, that oh my. That never goes away. So, so, but what, what, I guess the question really is, why are those, <laughs> why is the desire to put yourself out there so tied with the fear of doing it? Because the easier example, mm. the, the easier solution to all this would be like, just not put out the podcast. Right. Just don't do the poetry. It won't be scary for you. Yeah. yeah. So, but so that's what we're going for. You're going for that energy yeah. that, you know, that, that build up that you get. Before the release, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's the, it's the release for me. You know what I'm saying to be able to like be like, wow, um, I don't know what that did for anybody. What it did for me was empowering. Now I just feel like I can conquer things. Uh, I couldn't. I did before I learned how to to swim three years ago. Um, I was scared of everything, dirt. And then I just start overcoming fears, and I think poetry and just like performing that constant state of like yeah, trepidation. Yeah, or... <laughs> it's like you know, it's like an amusement park. You know, when you get on this roller coaster, when it hits that peak, you're wondering why you did it. <laughs> Even when you get off, you're like, why did I do that? Yeah, I just but I want to do my it. hair. What the... I want to do it again. <laughs> How many times did you get in that line at Michigan yeah. Adventures and Cedar Point, over and over again, knowing? That you know, there's a chance that this could all go wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's like performing. Um, that's what it's like watching a little bit too. 
right? Like, like watching you or watching any, uh, someone perform. Kind of like you, you kind of you know you're not hoping for it to happen, but you know there's a chance that it happens, and that makes it powerful and makes you a little more accepting and a little more forgiving. Also, I, I feel like, like when I go to a bad musical, a high school musical or something. Yeah, and I don't mean bad. This I think it's awesome. I I cry without fail at bad musicals because these aren't trained professional people. These are like just kids going up there and letting it all out there. Mm-hmm. They're not a hundred percent ready, of course. Yeah, and that's what's beautiful about it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. the it's like the 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 risk of failure is what makes the triumph so sweet or something. Or, I can see how you get there. I don't know. There's just something about people just moving around about and sharing things and. Uh, working together as a collective to to put something together for people to enjoy and experience like literally every time that you, you put yourself out there you, you're, you're just like a, you're you're sharing your creative currency you're you're, you're showing the universe even if, especially if you created it yourself but even if it's something that you're reenacting mm-hmm. you know you you found an energy inside of you that made you want to assert yourself in that way and so i say be in the audience to receive that to receive the tenacity and to receive like, dang, this person just came up there and told their business <laughs> in, a, in, in a clever way. Right. I want to tell my husband that, you know, he should put down the toilet seat tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> because the tenacity of that poet made me want to speak up for myself. I'm going to say it. That, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would like for people to take. Say, say, do you say what you would do? Yeah. It's like seeing somebody, seeing Kid Kane being herself up there fully and authentically doesn't necessarily inspire someone to go write a poem. It inspires them to maybe go and be themselves, though. Yeah. And that's really the real And to get closer to you. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's the whole thing. Well, I hope people experience that through listening to this and watching it. There's no way they won't, right? I hope so. I hope so. This has been good. I I had a good conversation. Yeah. I mean, I had, I hope it was, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Fantastic. I had a really good conversation. And I said a random poem. You got, can we, you want to do one? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'll just take it back to the beginning. So this is what, this is how kid met me. And uh, it was on the first grade playground. Me and my friends, we used to play Justice League. At first, I think it was this intense intrigue. See, I was drawn to her ability to get truth. Give me her magic lasso and let Superman keep that booth. And that's when I found out that I did not have super friends. And there were gender norms that even seven-year-olds just cannot bend. See, even when you play pretend, little boys must be up, up, and away Superman. But Sarah and Katie, they could play Green Lantern and Aquaman. That's because certain levels of tomboy were acceptable for an Aquaspan fluid. That is a period acceptable for each Saria or Katie until that first period she's expected to just wake up a lady. And if that's not crazy, I'm not sure what is. Life of static expectations or overnight metamorphosis and then I had mine. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. See, I still wish I had Wonder Woman's magic plan. I would jet back to that playground and retrace every single ounce of pain. I would tell that little boy they used to dress up like a big girl. It's all going to be okay. And I'd tell him not to give any impetus away to what others say. And not to carry the hurt on his back from the repeated refrains of faggot. But still, I'm happy, I'm happy that it happened because that's why I stand here today as an advocate. But who am I kidding? Advocates persuade on behalf of others. I am that other that... Puts the fear of God in your pastor, your priest, your father, or rest in peace, my own mother. See, it took a lifetime to discover me and straighten up all this messed up self-conceptual because I'm not straight or gay or trans. I'm just your average bisexual. So I traded in my childhood heroin for Scarface and Ice Cube. At first it was macho posturing. I'm just that another white boy with an attitude. I was coming out of mama's double wide. No one knew what was buried so deep under there. I was by bumping Ice Cube Predator in my mama's ride and smoking my Newports in the summer air. I would pimp mama's station wagon like it's my Mercedes. Compensation, baby. Anti-heroes, maybe. But what started out as teenage rebellion saved me more than a thousand times from going crazy. My home was not happy like the Keatons, the Huxtables, or the Bradys. Hip-hop saved my life literally from razor against skin. Shout out to Loop, Nas, Shady, Pac, and B.I.G., NYC, to CPT, KRS, to KDOT. I gotta proceed carefully because I know that I'm just a cream bob white boy from Michigan, but I did watch LA burn down through the eyes of O'Shea. That's Ice Cube, if you don't know, and Predator, well, it turned out not to be a good day. See, I learned something different 
from him than I learned from Dan Rather and my parents. I learned about Rodney King, Dr. King, the riots, and Malcolm. I fell asleep every night for a goddamn year listening to that album and seldom would one day go by that the Ghetto Boys were not in my tape deck because it was Scarface that put me up on crooked officers and brothers and sisters six feet deep beneath urban train wreck. MCs were for me heroes, teachers saving me from church and family xenophobia, but still filling my young and undiscerning head with sexism and internalized homophobia. So I'm back on the playground of life. And I'm trying to form my own Justice League. I Some say gangster rap ain't done shit for that, but I can't forget what it's done for me to set me free. I, I'm not kidding when I say I sit beneath a lilac tree in the cool breeze while ice cubes spit hot ash, and that's why I went and got my seminary degree. Despite a thousand sermons, that was the first person I heard use the word justice. But I'm sorry, Cube, we're not there yet. Because this cold world is still full of bigotry and hostility. And in truth, some of those songs had a little bit too misogyny. A bitch is a bitch is still stealing our sister's dignity. And I think we need some new liturgy. Because this ancient calligraphy too often cosigns hatred with the name of some divinity. I open up the book I used to love. I want to love. I no longer love. And I, 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 I remember the days when I thought that it could set me free. See, I have a 12-year-old son. I have a daughter that's in the 10th, 9th grade. <laughs> I want them to be free to be whoever they want to be when they go outside to play. More importantly, I will fight for them, bleed for them, die for them to have a world where they can love and be loved in return. Man or a woman, God or neighbor, but without that fear of being burned eternally. So I fervently strive to be the hero I am in their eyes because fatherhood came with great power and responsibility, but no cape, and I brought no disguise. I am just their hero. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. That was super excellent. Moved by that's a long one. I don't. I don't do There's it a lot, a lot in anymore. I don't do it a lot anymore because this is like three poems jammed together. Is when I first really started getting into this. But it's a. It's kind of one of those epic pieces, and it's Good. it's it's what bound me to kid into this community, and it's it's kind of how I just came out and was like, hey, like I'm this white pastor dude. Dri-. When I first started driving, I was still going to seminary when I started driving to Grand Rapids for the scene. And it was before I got ordained, before I dropped out of ministry, I was driving to Grand Rapids for the scene. And uh, it, that poem was my way of saying, like, um, I might be this white guy driving in from Holland and I'm getting ready to get ordained, but I'm I'm different. Please, please know that I'm on, on your side. Yeah. And apparently some people saw it. So thank you. Well, hell yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. That's a lot of that's a long a lot of words. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't write long shit like that anymore. That's a lot. I, to I'm remember. not down to haikus, but I try to keep <laughs> stuff a little shorter these days. It's beautiful. That's a good piece, right? Thanks. Yeah. Have, have you heard that one before? I have. I have heard that piece a lot. But I, um, and I know it's like to just put some poems together. You should. You should give them. You should give them their own space. You should go back yeah. to how they Separate used to read stuff out. Yeah, because yeah, then you give people the opportunity to. Yeah. Chew on it, but yeah, I love that. I love that piece. I'm so grateful you you both came on the show. Please go check out kidsetit.com. Please go check out what are some of the other areas that they, like your uh, diatribe and some of the other teaching type. Oh yeah, opportunities. Well, yeah, kidsetit.com. Follow follow me on Facebook at Kid Kane Poetry, Instagram at kidsetit k y d s a i d i t. Um, but really. If you follow me on there, you'll be able to see everything. Uh, I am a teaching artist with the Diatribe. You can go and support us at thediatribeinc.org. Um, there is going to be a beautiful live stream event. I will give you the information, then you can yeah, just we'll splash it, it in here. Yeah. Um, I will also be um, teaching a summer program with the Diatribe this summer. So you have uh, middle school to high school students that are interested in, um, you know, doing some programming with uh, the Poet Laureate of Grand Rapids, check out the diatribe.inc or just follow me online and uh, there will be more details about how you can get signed up for either virtual or in-person uh, poetry workshop this summer. Well, thank you so much, kid. Thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you. 
my, my invitation would be to any poets watching, anybody that's in the arts in the Grand Rapids scene, if you're interested in collaborating, coming on the show or doing some sort of event up in the space, I'll, I'll, I'll include a photo on the YouTube video of the space. Let's do it. Let's do a live poetry event here. Um, it'd be dope. It'd be cool. That'd be good. We'll be good. We, we always need a new space to hey, hear some art when it's safe. Yeah. Well, keep it rolling. Keep being an awesome example of just how to, how to be an authentic human. It's oh, cool. Thank you. I'm so glad that you gathered that from all the things that we talked about today. Well, that's the main focus. I feel like. Right? Thanks for having the space, man. Thank you, kid, for inviting me. And, yeah. And, thanks for and having sharing me. Up in the, the attic. Sharing the blessings. Sharing the space. Up in the attic. This place is great. This is. Um. You know, we were just gonna hang out at a bonfire, and I'm just like, ah, well, how about we just go? To well, you can still time. go do it. You can still go to a pot. That's yeah. the beauty of it. There's room for it all. We Look at this. Candle, <laughs> and we've had fire. True. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Peace and Peace love. Up. Thank you. Dreams and I so lose it. You never felt so useless till you try it. This sound like a happy song. So I bet you gonna nod your head in the groove. Won't you? Won't you? And I bet that you won't listen to the words to find the hurt that lies. Between the lines, but that's just fine. It's gonna feel the same to you. Well, you don't wanna hear how rare it is that the pain stop about as often as a LA raindrop. You just want another numb narrative about bitches and pill pop, and maybe turn your brain off to the beat drop. Absorb the flow like it's an instrument itself. I guess that's just as well. I guess whatever I can help, but sometimes I got more to say than rhythm and rhyme. The universe that I could use to pay if I want mine. Cause dreams are not so lucid You never felt so useless till you try But this sound like a happy song So I bet you gonna nod your head in the groove Won't you, won't you And I bet that you won't listen to the words To find the hurt that lies in between the lines But that's just fine, it's gonna Feel the same hue Another trip around the sun, crack a bottle 23 years and shit, I still ain't got a model Not one model citizen that I met Not one day where I raise these regrets off my chest Well, I guess I'm just another loose cannon Another could have been going off on a tangent Ain't that tragic, ain't I just a mess You here for the hook, well, he's coming next And dreams are not so lucid You never felt so useless till you try Like a happy song, so I bet you gonna nod your head in the groove. Won't you? Won't you? And I bet that you won't listen to the words to find the hurt that lies in between the lines. But that's just fine, it's gonna feel the same to you. And this sound like a happy song, so I bet you gonna nod your head in the groove. Into the words to find the hurt that lies in between the lines, but that's just fine. It's gonna feel the same to you.